afternoon. Uh, it's such a wonderful opportunity. Uh, it's a privilege for me to be here in front of you to talk about music. So I shall be talking about uh, um, the role of music in society, especially the society where uh, we uh, are raised up, where we were born. That's uh, the Nepalese society. And also about musical heritage and some of my experiences as a musician. Uh, may I have the slide, please? So to begin with, uh, that's the place where I was born. Uh, that's uh, Eastern Nepal. Uh, it's a pastor district. Uh, and the village is called Mehelbote. So he is one of my elder musician uh, brother who played uh, the My Music Ensemble. Uh, as a child, he played for the entire village uh, for auspicious occasions or during wedding ceremonies, etc. You know. Uh, but later, I came to know that he donated one of his kidneys in order to save life of uh, mm, one of our villagers. And then, uh, so I decided to meet him after several decades, two decades indeed, uh, meet him. So I went back to Pastor and we recorded some music, which was later produced, uh, even post-produced by uh, some several Grammy-winning record producers. So this is uh, the kind of... Uh, exchange that we have been doing uh, in the field of music. So as a child, there was no music uh, in the village, uh, music as in uh, performance, uh, I mean the contemporary music. There was no media. The radio in Nepal was established in 1950s only, 1951. So therefore I was not able to learn uh, any music theory. Uh, but I was fortunate enough to learn from the uh, friends and elders, the musicians, local musicians. And I was able to witness the local music tradition of my uh, village. So that is how maybe uh, that music was uh, somehow, in a way, indirectly, uh, cognitively uh, helping me out to become a musician. Because my initial goal was not uh, to be a musician, you know. So, uh, and gradually, my parents, uh, they decided to send me to uh, some good school. So I was, after my grade five, I went to Biratnagar. Uh, and then I saw my first guitar when I was in class eight. I mean, I was able to touch that guitar. And I was self-taught guitar player since then. And later, to become a medical doctor when I came to Kathmandu, I studied science here uh, uh, at Saga, uh, one of the boarding schools. Uh, music was already a big passion in my life. I had already recorded some music when I was in school. So I thought, why not continue music uh, as a career? So I was not able to express that uh, interest uh, to my family or to my elders, to my parents. Uh, but uh, I found this beautiful place at Kathmandu University, the Department of Music, which offered fully fledged courses in ethnomusicology uh, in South Asia. So there I started to study bachelor's in ethnomusicology. Uh, mean, meanwhile, I was also, uh, you know, recording music, performing with bands like Luza. Uh, and it was kind of participatory observation uh, because I was playing music, I was producing pop music, I was winning highest national awards, uh, I was uh, achieving big success uh, in the field of popular music in Nepal, even with rock bands when I played, uh, we really enjoyed the concerts, but I was learning uh, by then, you know. So I was, in that way, manner, I was introduced uh, to the popular music scene. On the other hand, 
I had deep love towards the local music tradition of our country. And I was very lucky that uh, I started to study ethnomusicology at Kathmandu University. So the academic approach, the performance, and everything was there in my life. So I decided to de-learn a little bit because, uh, or, you know, I decided to uh, figure out my own responsibility as a human being, uh, as a Nepali citizen, towards my own country or towards the society or towards the people and warm people, like, uh, uh, you know, the musicians from my village. So I decided to um, learn their music. So for that, I had to travel uh, from places to places. And I chose to do my uh, PhD in ethnomusicology. Therefore, I was able to travel seven different districts and many other places in Nepal. Uh, and I was able to learn some of the instruments like sarangi, uh, arbajo, or some newar drums and certain other local musical instruments. And I was also able to uh, learn how to uh, make the musical instruments. So therefore, you're, you know, it's just, I would like to remember all these people, you know, who are extremely talented than us. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's already a very uh, pleasant, uh, it's very pleasant to think you know, even think uh, that Nepal has 125 ethnic groups with vast and diverse uh, musical traditions, uh, cultures. So, and then some ideas popped up in my mind. That is how I learned sarangi, actually. Uh, uh, it was learning by doing. I was playing sarangi, but I was also writing a song. So sometimes it's really hard to learn such uh, small instruments, locally made instruments. Uh, and thanks to all the musicians uh, from all over Nepal. So later, I started to record and produce music by incorporating such instruments uh, like sarangi, arbajo, or some other kind of instruments. Uh, and also having some poetry, uh, some songs, uh, included uh, in the music and uh, it was kind of very inspiring and also uh, I was able to learn every day, you know, uh, investigate different instruments, learn uh, new sounds. So that is how I'm spending my life and I hope uh, I'll continue this way. But uh, there was a big question uh, always on my mind uh, that was since 2000 and 11, uh, after I started to travel across the country, uh, you know, combinedly, uh, we thought uh, the Department of Music, Kathmandu University, my supervisor, and, uh, you know, we always discussed about how can the musical heritage of Nepal be documented, analyzed, uh, not only archived or not only uh, preserved, but also applied uh, process. So these were the ideas that popped up on our minds always, every day. And we decided to, we came with an idea of amalgamating tangible heritage with intangible musical heritage uh, for the future generation, you know, in order to uh, not only create an infrastructure or a platform, but also to continue the musical traditions of Nepal. So next sli slide, please. So those were my uh, pop rock days. I was performing uh, some of the concerts with some guitar player, there's Hari Maharjan. Uh, next, please. So that was the idea. Uh, the amalgamation of tangible heritage with intangible musical heritage. Uh, next, please. So in order to do that, we decided to 
Mm, not only think, you know, come uh, along with some action plans. And we decided to restore and rebuild a heritage site in order to incorporate, blend the intangible musical heritage of Nepal and an academic institution like Kathmandu University definitely plays a vital role, that is what we thought, because university, what we believe is, we, university is uh, that platform, uh, it's a laboratory for knowledge, it's, uh, you know, the knowledge can be transmitted endlessly uh, through any universities. So that's the uh, basic principle we kept in mind, and uh, so while, uh, and then the university leaders are uh, we musicians. I started to work at Kathmandu University by, by then full time. We decided to restore Tripura Shundari. That's a, a place built by Queen Lalit Tripura Shundari in 1800, 1880 in memory of her husband, uh, Rana Bahadur Shah. Next slide, slide, please. So that was the situation of temple post earthquake. Uh, that's uh, April 2015 earthquake, effect of the earthquake. Uh, next one, please. That was the situation of Satals and the complex before the earthquake. Uh, so it was, it was not built as it was in 1800, 1880. So we started doing some certain research work. We uh, worked with some architects. Uh, we worked with some, uh, you know, experts in the field of heritage restoration. And then we decided to restore it. Uh, at, in, in, in the meanwhile, we were documenting, we are, have been documenting the musical heritage of Nepal musical traditions. So these are the ideas. And later, uh, next slide, please. So now we are in this state. We have 115 uh, workers and uh, colleagues uh, who are working with musicians like us. But the greatest thing is they are greatest artists, you know, uh, the wood carvers, and, and it's a Malla Kalin, uh, Malla period architecture. So it's very fascinating for us. Next, please. So the pinnacle of the temple, you can see that it was completely destroyed by the earthquake. Now we have, so one of our colleagues, he worked for five months, he and his team, and it was restored. It's again kept there. Next, please. That's the outfit of pinnacle now, uh, the gajur. Next. And... Uh, not to forget, you know, for such projects, because music in Nepal, for us as a musician, uh, since childhood days, like I said earlier, we did not have music education, set up for music education or research or uh, even set up for PhD studies in Nepal. So these were very challenging, but now uh, there are big leaders, even uh, thanks to the university vice chancellor who has been great supporter uh, for this uh, work. And they also have supported uh, this idea, amalgamation of musical heritage with tangible heritage. Uh, next, please. So that was uh, the vice chancellor, Dr. Ram. He went and he met an instrument maker. He is a, he, uh, He's the last remaining instrument maker of this instrument called Pantarvanam. It's in East uh, Nepal, Japa district. Uh, but now we are trying to restore their tradition, also the Santhal tradition. Uh, next, please. So that was the picture I took five years ago, almost. Uh, that's Pantarvanam and that's Katvanam. That's cool. So, uh, you know, the transmission of music, how music transmits from one generation to another. So Nepal is a big example for oral tradition. Nepal doesn't have any specific uh, kind of uh, musical 
guidelines for music learners or, uh, or the Nepalese instruments, uh, they are not yet standardized properly. So we are trying to uh, formalize the musical tradition of uh, all these uh, local musicians by keeping alive their musical heritage, the rich musical heritage. Next, please. So musicians from different communities, they work with us these days under the uh, umbrella of Kathmandu University Department of Music. That is one of the uh, biggest staves in the field of uh, local music and ethnomusicology in Nepal, I think. So the future uh, is, uh, it seems it's very, uh, very hopeful. We can be, uh, remain very hopeful. Uh, it's very bright. The future of music and music education in Nepal. Next, please. Uh, so these are the rich traditions. I just wanted to show you some pictures. Next. So that's the infrastructure that we have envisioned. Uh, that's the first draft uh, because in uh, Nepal, musicians uh, normally, uh, it is believed that they have to play music only, uh, or they have to, uh, but, but music as an academic subject or music, the, the research areas in music, it's vast, you know. It can be interdisciplinary. Uh, it can, uh, musicians can collaborate with any other fields in, in a way. So we have been collaborating with engineers, architects, and so on in this project. Uh, so that's the queen, Tripura Sundari, who built Tripureshwar. So there are two basic things that I wanted to share today. Uh, one is uh, the multi-ethnic Nepal, uh, the music of Nepal can play a significant role, not only uh, you know, to entertain people or uh, for the contemporary uh, medias or musicians, but uh, in order to uh, promote inclusion, the federal uh, Nepal, you know, and we Nepalese, we are seeking so much of identity. So if we are able to apply our own heritage, our own skills, and uh, create new dimensions in any field, I think Nepal will progress a lot. Uh, thank you so much. And at the end, I will be playing another song for you. It's called Samaz. Thanks a lot. So this is, uh, this instrument is called Arbaja. Uh, it's also called, known as Arbajo and Arbaj. Uh, this is the male counterpart of female sarangi as per the Gandharva musicians. Uh, this instrument uh, was rarely played in 50s and 40s, 1950s, 40s. Uh, but later, on, uh, the Gandharvas, they stopped playing this instrument. Uh, and the reason behind that, they said during interviews, is because of the size and because of a limited, you know, uh, it's, it's not that versatile as Sarangi is, uh, that's what they said. Uh, it was such a great opportunity for me to uh, learn how to make this instrument. I collaborated with uh, Hari Gandharva in Kaski. It took us 29 days. And then I wrote a song for a movie. Uh, the song is called Samaz. I would like to play that song for you. Tayo Bane Tio Paha Bata Badal 
भटायो भले इंद्रेनिका रंग हरु देखिं चारा सागर छुटायो भले त्यो नदी बाटा सागर छुटायो मित्रता नहीं बाजो बाजो उन चारा A singer, her day ma, samaj safa hune bhai, manav jati le, odar ma grihasti basau the. Malaita Ka singer bhai ni Pyaaru, pyaaru Oda rai panita Nyanru Keval uljhan haru Matra Garo समाधान बंदा समस्या अपनायो भले समाधान बंदा समस्या अपनायो हत्व कांचा लालच रघीरा बर्दई नारा चिंतन सहयोग रकरुना अस्तायो रमाया भने निभाई नारा
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.